What's up guys, this is my first video that I'm doing about the election and um, you know I've never really taken a um, webcam video of myself doing so but you know I felt like this was a, a good one to start off with because obviously uh, it's a lot that I want to talk about and there's a lot you know that I want to put my opinion towards so obviously this video is <clears throat> why I thought in my opinion Hillary Clinton lost the election that really everybody thought that she should have won um, I just want to go through what I personally think. There's a lot of things that you know most people would agree with me with, but um, really, I'll just I'll just get down to it, and I'll you know try to cut off some you know long ass introduction that really doesn't need to be done. So, the first thing that I think that um, happened that she really needed was a high voter turnout. Um, we saw what the electoral map should have looked like. A lot of states that she should have had. And it, it just didn't happen because a lot of people, I feel like, um, they looked at these polls, which, you know, everybody thought were uh, rigged or, you know, uh, inaccurate. And they definitely were inaccurate, but I feel as if a lot of people, they had um, they looked at these polls before going to the booths and they said, oh, well, look, she's, she's up by 14 points in this poll. She's up by 8 points in that poll. What's, what's the real point of voting for her? She's going to win anyway, you know, and... Um, a lot of those people, they were basically just voting for her to keep Trump out. So once they found, there was no real enthusiasm for her, which is what I'll get to. But when they found out that she was winning by such a large margin, they said, what's the point of voting? I mean, she's going to win anyway. We're not going to worry. Trump's going to lose. So really had a poor turnout. And uh, I really think the only demographic that really did turn out well for her was Latinos. But um, otherwise, uh, whites really at least, you know, Trump won most of the white vote. Um, at least maybe the ones that would have voted for her didn't come out and wanted to vote for her. That just didn't happen. Um, African Americans, of course, you know, they don't usually have a high turnout from what I've been told, but um, the fact that they were able to come out and vote in larger numbers for Trump than they did for Romney four years ago is, to be honest, pretty embarrassing for the Clinton campaign. Now, that gets to my next point, which is the lack of enthusiasm. Now, you always heard about, you know, people going around to, you know, driving around the country and seeing more Trump yard signs than Hillary yard signs. And, and first you're thinking, ah, whatever, you know, it's just yard signs. It doesn't mean anything. But you know what? It ended up meaning something because the people that are enthusiastic about voting for their candidate end up going to the polls. And that just didn't happen for Hillary because she didn't have the enthusiasm that the Trump supporters did. Um, it, Trump was almost a guy where, you know, you either loved him or hated him. And uh, the people that loved him, obviously, they were very enthusiastic about going to the polls and supporting him and voting for him. And uh, just the same could not be said about Hillary. Um, and, you know, people talked about as well the um, uh, the rallies, you know, the size of the rallies. You had uh, Clinton rallies, which were like gymnasium sizes, like high school gymnasiums. And then you had Trump, which had almost like 20,000 people. And it was just unbelievable to look at. It's like, wow, you know, people really love this guy. And they're coming out to... Um, to really support him like that is just, you know, people were getting to wonder, you know, these polls must not be real because you're looking at these crowds and you're like, there's just no way. So that's another thing that might have had something to do with it. Um, the third point that I want to get at is I think third party candidates really did make an impact. And um, of course, you know, the polls at this point, the polling industry really has lost its credibility after what had happened. But um, you looked at all the polls and usually there would be a two way race between you know, both candidates, both major party candidates, and then they would have another poll which would add in the third party candidates. And what you noticed is that pretty much every single poll showed that Trump did better in a four-way race, which means that the third party candidates were pulling away from Hillary. I don't know if it was significant enough for him to win, you know, close states, maybe like Florida or Wisconsin or the states they ended up flipping, but, um, you know, because Gary Johnson really didn't do as well as he should have and um, had a really, really poor showing in the general election. I think he only had about like 9.3% in New Mexico, which is, to be honest, pretty pathetic for what he should have done. I mean, you think of Evan McMullen, who was able to, uh, you know, grind out like, what, 20, 25% in Utah? So, you know, I, I really I really think that was a disappointment for the Johnson campaign, the Johnson World campaign, but... Um, but really, I think that it did have a good impact on pulling more votes away from Hillary. Um, the next point that I want to get at is the Bernie or bust people. And I always said this before uh, the election happened. And, you know, I was sure that Hillary was going to win. I was wrong, like most people. But I said that if Hillary loses this election, the DNC is going to feel really, really, really bad about what they did to Bernie Sanders. 
and uh, I think they're really feeling that. And I don't know if it's really has to do with the Bernie people um, holding a grudge and not going out to vote for Hillary. I think that had a large part to do with it because, you know, it all came down to the fact that she just wasn't likable enough to be voted for. But um, I really think that um, a lot of those Bernie people, they, they, just, they just didn't have the same support for her. Um, and if they had ran Bernie Sanders instead of Hillary, um, we talked about enthusiasm, the people wanting to go out to the polls to vote. And I think that if you had Bernie Sanders, this is a guy who had a message. He had a message that resonated with the people, just like Trump did. You know, Trump was the guy of change. He wanted, uh, you know, again, to, to, not, to go away from the status quo. Um, and Sanders was, again, the guy who, who really had a message that resonated with the working class and those kind of people and the progressives who really want that kind of progressive change. So that was a guy with, who would have had more enthusiasm by the voters and would have, I guarantee you, and I say this to the bottom of my heart, would have won this election if he had ran, if he had got nominated, I'm sorry. And the Democrats really screwed themselves over by, by not nominating him and, again, screwing him over. And what you're doing by screwing him over is, again, you're alienating the, the, the supporters of him. And I think Trump really did a good job. He did make a lot of mistakes throughout the campaign of taking bait when it came to things. But when Sanders was insulting Trump and he was saying, you know, uh, you know Trump is a horrible candidate, he's a racist, he's a bigot, um, I think Trump did a very, very good job of not retaliating because he knew that he was going to get a lot of Bernie or Bust people that were holding a grudge against the DNC and Hillary voting for him. So he did a very, very good job of holding, keeping it together and um, really swarming in a lot of those voters. And I really do believe that was one of the cases. And um, there's a lot more points to be said, but the last point that I do want to bring up uh, for this video, I'm going to make it short, is the silent majority vote. A lot of people didn't see it coming, and I said to myself, all right, well, you know, if there's no silent majority, um, then Trump is going to lose. Um, and the reason that I thought there might be a silent majority, like a lot of other people, is because I live in the state of New York, and of course there's other states like California that are very, very progressive and very liberal, but you are almost afraid for your own safety <laughs> to bring up that you're a Trump supporter, or you, even that you're going to vote for him. I mean, the amount of hatred that progressives have for this guy is just unbelievable. And, um, you know, that really prevented a lot of people from coming out and saying, hey, you know, I'm going to vote for Trump. You know, they were, they were afraid, and they said, all right, you know what, these guys are, you know, very aggressive, and they're, they're very angry towards, you know, whatever the media's been telling them about him maybe being a racist or, or a bigot or a misogynist or whatever. And uh, so they kept their mouth shut, you know, including me. I kept my mouth shut. I voted for Trump, and, uh, again, I didn't want to tell anybody until after the result happened because then it's kind of like, ha-ha, fuck you, you know, in your face, we won. But, uh, you know, uh, that, was, that, was, that was a real part of it, and you had... Um, a lot of uh, what I what I explained to people about the about it afterwards was that you had the establishment kind of masking what was going on. You had them saying to the people, um, you know, everything's okay. Uh, there's nothing. There's nothing really wrong. Um, <clears throat> we can keep up the way it is. The world's going great. And what this was again, it was like a Brexit thing. It was the silent majority people screaming for help and saying, no, we're not okay. We're not okay with the status quo. We're not okay with the way our country's going. Um, you know, interestingly enough, you looked at the real clear politics every day, and um, I don't know if anybody really noticed, but you go down to the top, bottom of the list, and they usually had a poll that said, um, is a country on, a, on the right direction or the wrong direction? And pretty much 60% of the, over 60% of the vote would get um, wrong direction, wrong track. People really didn't like the way the, the country, you know, the track that's going, that, that the country's going on. And, uh, you know, again, the, the Rust Belt states were, were the deciding factor in this election. You know, he won because he won Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. And uh, the Clinton campaign did a poor job of recognizing the fact that the Rust Belt states have a lot of those um, white male blue-collar workers that are really desperate for jobs, you know, like those, those coal miners and the people that are sick of those regulations on the EPA and that are throwing energy companies out of business and they want their jobs back. And Trump obviously had a message that resonated very well with those people, and they were very enthusiastic about voting for him. And uh, that that is the reason why, and it, it's a shock to me that that a state like Pennsylvania, you know, a deep blue state that hasn't went red since 1988, went red. Um, 
you know, it was a shock to me, but when I think about those reasonings and, you know, the, the people that wanted jobs back and that silent majority people, uh, it really does it really does make a lot of sense. And the Clinton campaign did a very, very poor job of being able to recognize that and to be able to go into those places and campaign, you know. They, they just said, oh, you know, we have those states. It's no problem. Um, we don't have to worry about it. Those states are, are in the bag for us. But um, they, really, they really did make a mistake by not campaigning there. And... Um, you know, that's overall. I can I can bring up. I think I brought up about six points, five six points about why I thought that Hillary lost this election that that she should have won. And obviously, it's a political shocker. But um, I would say overall, the reason that she lost this election is because she just wasn't likable enough. And you look at a lot of these states and these areas, these certain districts that Barack Obama did very very well in in two thousand in two thousand twelve and even two thousand eight, and um, she just underperformed. Um, and I wouldn't say maybe it's because Romney is a weaker candidate than Trump. He could be. He could not be. We don't. We won't really know. But um, I would say obviously he's. You know, uh, Trump is more unique than Romney. But I would say really the reasoning is because um, you know Obama is just more likable. And really when it comes down to it, that's that's what people are going to vote for. You know, they're going to vote for the person that's they can identify with the most. That. They have they have more of a connection with that they like more, and Hillary just wasn't that person. You know, Obama. They say he's you know he he's got the political skills. He's he's got a you know he's a charming personality. He's he's smooth. Hillary just wasn't any of that. And I think I think um, you know beyond all the masking of the media, uh, people were able to see through that for sure. And I do want to bring up one more point. I, I did forget to bring it up, but um, I think I think this is really, really one of the biggest reasons, and that's that the media shot themselves in the foot big time with all of this. They thought that they were doing the good job for Hillary by, uh, you know, again, posting these fake headlines about Trump. Not fake, maybe exaggerated sometimes. Um, again, just demonizing him, making the voter feel like they were, you know, the devil for voting for the devil. <laughs> And uh, really, really just just absolutely viciously attacking Trump to a point where it wasn't even a secret that they were doing it for as a bias. And after a while, because they went too crazy with it, people caught on. And it became a thing where everybody knew, okay, that the media is in the tank for Hillary, you know. Everybody knew it. And I think that really did piss off a lot of voters. And they said, you know what? Fuck you, establishment. You know, we don't we don't want to we don't want to be influenced by you. We don't want to be lied to. And a lot of people, I really do feel like, went out and they voted for Trump just to stick their middle finger up to the establishment, to stick their middle finger up to the media. And um, that really was a big part of it. So uh, really, you know, uh, Trump won this election. A lot of people aren't happy about it. And uh, one thing that, that the media also did to shoot themselves in the foot was they um, gave him a lot of media coverage. Um, I think they said about two million dollars worth of media coverage, and uh, I really think it's more than that. I mean, you know, you talk to anybody about this election while it's going on, it was all about Trump this, Trump that, Trump said this, Trump said that, Trump did that. After a while, the, the whole election's about Trump, you know, and, and they, they forgot to realize that negative publicity is still publicity. So, you know, they, they did a poor job of doing that because they gave him too much coverage and too much recognition. People started to look at him. He became not not the more politically popular candidate, but the more popular candidate. People knew him more, and uh, you know I feel like I feel like that did really have an impact. So overall, that's my opinion of why Hillary lost this election that she should have won, and why Trump pulled off one of the biggest upsets in political history. Um, like, comment, uh, subscribe, whatever. You know I never made a video like this before, but. Um, I would really like to hear your opinions, and um, yeah, I hope share it around. You know, I hope I hope uh, other people get to see this. Take it easy, guys.